evening, good evening. Welcome, my brothers and sisters online, those on Facebook and YouTube. We praise God for each and every one of you. Welcome to Walking in the Word, Word Wednesday. I'm Dr. Norwood, your host for this evening, and I pray that God moves in a supernatural way on this Zoom experience. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your glory. Lord, bless my brothers and sisters on this line. Lord, bless me, Lord. We need to hear from you this evening. Father, we're in a spiritual battle. And God, you know the beginning from the end. So we declare and declare your blessings, Lord. Protect us, God. Be with us, Lord. Open minds to receive a word from you. Bless my brother and sister on the other side of this Zoom. Bless my brother and sister on Facebook. Bless my brother and sister on YouTube. Have your way, Holy Ghost, right now in the name of Jesus is my prayer. Amen. This evening. Sometimes it's got good to look back. Sometimes you got to ask the question, what's really going on? And this past week, Elder Bill, I had asked the question, what's really going on? So the Holy Spirit reminded me, we, have, we are fighting an unseen battle. We are fighting an unseen battle. Can we talk about it this evening? Let's talk about it. The battle is not for what, who you see, it's who's pulling the strings behind them. So let's look at it this evening, fighting an unseen battle. Ephesians 6, 12 through 13 says this, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places, therefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. Oh, I'm about to shout. I got to preach this weekend. But my brothers, my sisters, we're in a true spiritual battle. I was reminded of that this past week. Uh, every time I turn on the news, we are in this real spiritual battle. But here's the good news. Here's the good news, Sister Inez. The good news is that we got the victory. They're going to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. But we got the victory in Jesus Christ, Sister Snee. Let's talk about it this evening. Have you ever felt that there's more going on in the world around you? That there's more than what meets the eye? You could never put your finger on it, but somehow you knew that there was more to life than what you were experiencing. You said that there was a struggle of some kind taking place, a struggle that had far greater implications in your life that you might be aware of. Maybe we are all in a struggle of sorts, a battle, if you will, whether you realize it or not, we are all in a spiritual battle. A battle not with guns and tanks, but a battle nevertheless. A battle in the spiritual realm being fought for the souls of mankind. Let me share this with you. Oh, Sister Sneed, I wish your daughter's online because the devil used people to get them discouraged with God, discouraged with the church. The devil used anything in his power to get people discouraged, to throw in the towel. Because we're not fighting a physical battle. I, I got to drive this home. We are not fighting a, spirit, a physical battle. We are fighting a spiritual battle. Tonight, we will dive into the reality of the spiritual battle. Discover your part to play and allow your eyes to be open to the battlefield as being fought over your own soul. Discern how evil operates and how to defend yourself against evil powers intent on your destruction. The devil don't care if you're president. The devil don't care if you're a pastor. The devil don't care if you have money, don't have money. The devil is after our souls. And sometimes we get so upset, we get so discouraged, we get so depressed that we give up. We cannot give up. As what I went through this past week, I was reminded you can't give up because God will always have the last word. Mark Coleman wrote this. Look at this, what he wrote about in Ellen White. The writings of Ellen White substantiate the reality of the spiritual struggle waged by human beings against devils and demons. We don't like talking about that. While Ellen White views the battle against sin and unrighteousness in life as not just one, a mere inward struggle, but as a very real battle described by her as the great controversy between Christ and Satan that also involved every battle between people and Satan and evil spirits. I got to share this, Elder Bill. I got to share this. You, 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 probably, you know this. Your dad was a pastor. In this time, there are people not going to the ministry. There are pastors who are leaving the ministry because of this spiritual battle. 
it gets rough in these streets. There are people getting divorced because of the spiritual battle. There are people who are thrown in the towel because of this spiritual battle. So long we have let the devil lull us to sleep. Oh, you know, they're just having a bad day. Oh, no, they are full of the devil. Their spirit ain't right. There's something not. We got to have a discerning spirit. And then we got to stand on the word of God because this is a real spiritual battle. In fact, the warfare to be carried out against the powers of darkness is such a fundamental principle to human existence that White reminds her readers that it's one of Satan's goal to blind human minds to this fact. We go to church Sabbath after Sabbath. Some of you may who's watching may go to church on Sunday. We go to the we go to the church and we go through rote motions and we see things. And we don't want to address things. But the truth of the matter is, it's a spiritual warfare. While Satan is seeking to blind their minds in the, to the fact that Christians never forget that they wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places. The inspired one is signing down to the centuries of our be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Mm, First Peter 5 8. We got to be mindful. We got to be vigilant. We got to understand that it's not our battle, that God is in control. Let's look at it this evening. The real enemy is not your co worker, your spouse, their children, your church member, mother in law, father in law, in laws, relative, the person who cut. Cut you off on, on 16 or 59. The pastor, the church team, that is not the real enemy. I'll see the chat lighting up this evening. I see the chat. I see the chat lighting up. That is not the real enemy. And many times we make them the enemy, but it's not the enemy. It's something that's a spirit. That many times the church is not adequate, uh, adequate enough to address spiritual warfare many times. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. We are living in a time as Jesus Christ returns. He is knocking on the door. We have to wake up, be vigilant, because we are in a real spiritual warfare. Recognizing the real enemy. Recognize the real enemy. Let's look at it this evening. Look at this. You have a girl, and then you have the devil. And this is a, this is a picture. The devil don't have uh, horns or red tail. This is just an analogy. But it's true. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Nancy sings praises to the Lord. As she gets ready to work, she hasn't even seen Sally. That's her roommate. How great thou art, how great thou art, she sings. And then the devil whispers, I bet Sally didn't even do the dishes last night. Here's a catch because the thought starts with I. Nancy assumes it's her own thoughts. Let me say that one more time. We assume that what, when we do something wrong, when we don't do something right, it's our own thoughts. But the devil whispers in our in our minds. That's why we got to take every thought into captivity. Here's what the devil's whispering in, in her ear. She's so lazy and never does her part of, of the housework. She's just using me. Have you ever been there? Have you ever thought somebody was using you? Have you ever thought that somebody didn't take took you for granted? And you know it's just a thought because the devil is whispering in your ear. The demon continues to build her anger by throwing in more negative thoughts about Sally. Mercy. I've had you been, I've been there. Can I just be real? I've been there. Where but where my thoughts have been so, 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 so upset that the more, the more negativity you get, the more negative you become. So here now, here, look what happened. So finally, finally, Nancy finally missed her roommate. And even before anything can come out, I'm at the bottom. Good morning. How are you doing? Huh, goodbye. She's already in a bad mood. Nancy's already in her feelings. because, And they haven't even had a conversation yet because the devil whispered in Nancy's ears. Good, uh, good morning. How are you doing? Or somebody can say, happy Sabbath. Uh, how are you doing? By the time Nancy meets Sally, she's so angry, she isn't even civil to her. No, Sally did the dishes last night, but Nancy's too angry to notice. Have you ever been too angry to notice the truth? Have you been ever been too angry to notice what's really going on? And look, and look at this. What here's, here's what's this? Sally says, What did I do? And here's the devil. 
whispering to Sally. She thinks she's so much better than you. She's always nasty to me. The demon begins to manipulate Sally. She accepts me. She accepts she accepts a thought because of the word me. She thinks it's her thoughts. And here's the devil laughing. But I have a rotten day. Ha! Ah! Both girls are off to a rotten start. We gotta watch how we begin the day. We have to guard our thoughts. Let's go to the next one. Another day. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Nancy sings praise to the Lord as she gets ready for work. She hasn't even seen Sally yet. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then she sings, I bet Sally didn't do the dishes because the thought starts with I. Nancy assumes it's her own thoughts. Then the devil says, she's so late, she never does her part of the house where she's getting, she's just using me. The demon continues to build her anger by throwing in more negative thoughts about Sally. Then Nancy, praise God, catches herself. Wait a minute. I shouldn't be thinking these things. I think about the Lord instead. Let's, let's see. The Lord is my shepherd. I should not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Yeah, walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will fear no evil. When we start having these evil negative thoughts, we have to think about the Lord. But I had to take the trash out last night because she wouldn't do it. I sure not won't. So the devil never stopped. The Bible says the devil goes around like a roaring lion. He's not going to stop. But here's the thing. If we don't have the full arm of God on, if we don't have the anointing of God in us, if we are not full feel of the Holy Spirit, we can go through something like this. I'm, I'm Hold that thought. I'm going to come back to that thought. Let me go, finish with these cartoons. Good morning. How are you doing? Huh? By the time Nancy meets Sally, she's so angry, she isn't even civil to her. Sally did the dishes last night, but Nancy's too angry to notice. And then, hold on, I'll go back. There we go. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Nancy sings praises to the Lord, and she gets ready for work. She hasn't even seen Sally yet. How great thou, how, how great thou art this, she sings. I bet Sally didn't do the dishes last night. Nancy recognized that this thought is not in obedience to Christ Jesus. Mercy. Nancy recognized that this thought is not in obedience to Christ Jesus. Wait a minute. That's not my thought. Satan's doing it again. Satan, you, you and your demons rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I will not accept those thoughts about Sally. Go. There seems my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Good morning, Sally. Thanks for doing the dishes last night. Have a good day. Look how Nancy changed because she took her thoughts into captivity. Here, Nancy recognizes the true source of her thoughts. She brings the power of Jesus against the source, saying his demons, and has the victory. This is a practical example of taking captive every thought to make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Saints of the living God, we have to get to this spiritual maturity level that we got to control our thoughts. Let's, let's, bring, let's bring it home. I get to church on the Sabbath. Elder Bill is in my favorite seat. We know we have some favorite seats. Every Sabbath, I can tell you who's going to sit in what seat. We have favorite seats. Amen, somebody. Elder Bill is sitting in my favorite seat. Huh? He knows. I, and, and, and the devil whispers in my ear. He knows that's my seat. He's playing games. And, all, and if we do not catch those thoughts into captivity, then they will come out and then more drama will start. And I can give you example after example. You can give some examples of family members, maybe on the job, maybe in the church, where the, the confusion started with just a single thought. We have to think holy thoughts, righteous thoughts. But let's talk about it this evening. The substance of moral character, August 2nd, Ellen G. White. Even your thoughts must be brought into subjection to the will of God and your feelings under the control of reason and religion. Your imagination was not given to you to be allowed to run, run, ride, and have its own way without any effort of restraint or discipline. If the thoughts are wrong, the feelings will be wrong, and the thoughts and feelings combined make up the moral character. If you yield to your impressions and allow your thoughts to run in a channel of suspicion, doubt, and repining, you will be among the most unhappy of mortals. Control our thoughts. No matter, it's not, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. It's not what happens to us. It's how we respond to what happens. Let me say that one, one more time. It's not what happens to us. It's how we respond to what happens. We must discern how the devil works and learn how to defeat the real enemy. 
We must discern how evil operates and how to defend ourselves against evil powers intent on our destruction. I've been there. You all been there. I was there this couple of weeks ago. We must discern how evil operates and how to defend yourself against evil powers intent on our destruction. How did we get this discernment? How do we get this discernment? What must we do? Supernatural discernment is from the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul lists nine supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit that should be operating in the church and are available to believers. And one of the reasons we have to, one of the things we have to do as a church is operate in the gifts of the Spirit. One of the gifts are called discerning of spirits. 1 Corinthians 12, 10. Discerning of spirits are particularly useful in the maturity ministry of deliverance. Although it's not limited to that purpose, it can be defined as the supernatural ability to perceive what is happening in the spiritual realm and judge between the Holy Spirit and demonic spirits. Scripture is clear about the spiritual realm. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. 1 John 4, 1. John wants us in to test, examine, and scrutinize, discern if the spirit is good or evil. Matthew 10, 16. Christ mandate to us that we become wise as serpents and harmless as doves implies that we must develop discernment, the ability to take motivation and the spirit's that motivate the gift of discerning the spirits will become increasingly important as we approach the end of this age because deception will be the hallmark of these extremely dangerous times. The Bible says even the very elect can be deceived. We got to keep on studying, keep on praying, keep on fasting, keep on in the word, keep on living for God because these are evil times. A cheerful witness. Pray for wisdom to manage your affairs with discretion and thus prevent loss and disaster. Do all you can on your part to bring about favorable results. Jesus has promised his aid, but not apart from our effort. When we rely upon our helper, you have done all you can. Accept the result cheerfully. We have to go steps to Christ. As we grow in Christ, we must share our love for God through our words, actions, and deeds, so that we may lead others into a loving relationship with God. We must grow in Christ. That's what God is asking for. We must grow in Christ and have a loving relationship. And just like I said a couple of Sabbaths ago, people will know us by our fruits. People will know us. And if your root is right, the fruit's going to be right. But if your the root is wrong, the fruit is going to be wrong. We must grow in Christ each and every day. Trust and obey, but there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for this lesson. It may have been brief, but it's powerful. Just a reminder that Satan gets in our thoughts. Forgive us, God, for not staying guard of our thoughts, our intents, our actions. Father, but we know, Lord, that you are real. So, God, I decree and declare power over the enemy, victory over temptation. Father, you know that people are coming against your men and women of God, your churches. But, God, we got the victory in Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I stand on the promise of God. We stand on the promise of God. Have your way. Forgive us of our sins and wash us in the blood. And have your way, Holy Ghost, right now in the name of Jesus. We can't do anything without you. But if you just say the word, Lord, we should be made whole. So anoint us afresh. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you want to connect with us, go to www.berinsdhouston.org, www.berinsdhouston.org, 713-654-8945, 713-654-8945. You want to give a blessing to the church, check a money order to Berin SDA Church, P.O. Box 1300, 77251. Berin SDA Church, send check or money order to Berin SDA Church, P.O. Box 1300, Houston, Texas, 77251, or 2119 Saint Emmanuel Street, Houston, Texas, 77003. And if you're in Houston, won't you just show up to 2119 Saint Emmanuel Street, Houston, Texas, 77003. Then we have our cash out, dollar sign, HBSDA Church, dollar sign, HBSDA Church. Then on March 30, we have the, the famous, the anointed woman of God. Callie Day, you don't want to miss it. Bring a friend, bring a family member. It's going to be a high day. 
It's going to be a high day. Bring a friend, a family member. March 30th, the last Sabbath in March. You don't want to miss it. Then Season of Grace, March 16th to the 30th at 7 p.m. Evangelism series. You don't want to miss it. Then on April 6th, we have, there's a thank you celebration. We should be thankful every day, but there's a thankful celebration for Dr. And Pastor and Nicole Norwood. Join us for a dynamic service. It's going to be powerful. You're going to experience a powerful move of God. Then take the experience with you. Download the app on Google Play or Apple Store. Download the app and be blessed. I see the chat lighting up this evening. Amen. God Avenue is that's right. May God bless you and keep you as my prayer. May he make his face shine upon you. Thank you for tuning in this evening. May God bless you. Remember, we are in a true spiritual battle, but God got your back. May God bless you and keep you as my prayer. Amen.